Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. All right, so I've got an interesting one for you guys by Gear Guru here on Reverb.com. So I stumbled across this listing earlier this week, and I thought, oh man, that looks so nice from the top, even though I don't normally like the super pinstripey stuff. But then I looked at the price, $4,360.05, and I just thought, eh, it's, it's not that special. I'm sure someone will fall in love with this top and pay for it. But I am so glad I took the time to additionally scroll through these photos, because what I found on the back was exactly what I was hoping for. And honestly, this thing just had a whole bunch of surprises. So let's start with the top. Obviously a beautiful figured guitar here. It's kind of a uh, aqua green color. Heavily flamed, but not quite book matched. I kind of like this really wide flame area right here. You get your gold hardware. It appears to have actually been used quite a bit because the gold has already been worn off of it right there on what appears to be a Nashville style bridge. And based on our certificate of authenticity, that dates it to 2015. And it's just billed as a Les Paul Custom F. Continuing on here though, I love this photo. They must have took it like right by an open window with the natural lighting. Because that made that top just come to life and it makes this color look so good. And here we can see another special feature about this one. Being in 2015, that's the Richley era, right? So we've got a rosewood fretboard, kind of like the second generation Widows and some other Les Paul Customs birthed during this era. And I always thought the green and orange widows looked the best with the rosewood fretboard. So finding just kind of this mint green spearmint color guitar with that, I just thought, yeah, th yeah, that's okay. All right. I mean, as far as the face of the headstock, it's just a regular Les Paul Custom. You get your custom block inlays here. It's definitely a real Gibson because you've got those little tooling marks right there. But then I flip to the back and oh my goodness. <laughs> So this is exactly what I was hoping that this guitar would have, a flamed back. This five piece maple neck that's also extremely flamed, that's just icing on the cake. And I swear to you guys, the only reason this has not sold yet is because people are just looking at this leading photo going, yeah, okay, it's got a flame top, cool. They're not seeing the back. So if this video doesn't sell this guitar, I don't know what will. If I was the seller, this would be my leading photo because I think the back is way cooler on this guitar than even the front. And that's saying a lot because the front isn't necessarily anything to sneeze at. But take a look at that two piece flame maple back. Now that's likely some sort of a light veneer. This is not a feature that you find on Les Paul Customs too often. They have to usually be custom orders or limited edition runs. I mean, this is very similar to a The Les Paul, so they're normally about an eighth of an inch thick on the back. So not quite as big as the full on maple top. But we get our Gibson Custom Medallion and a regular back plate here. And the neck is just so insane. I, I don't think I've ever seen a highly figured neck like this in the green finish. That looks awesome. And the fun part about it being green is we can turn it any color that we want here with the power of chroma keying. Sadly, that didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to. But we've got the gold Grover tuners on the back as well and our Gibson Custom Shop Edition decal. So after seeing all this, I got really excited. Did they flame the sides like a The Les Paul? Because if that was the case, I would have just bought this guitar because I think it's already a fantastic price for what it is. But unfortunately, no. So it's kind of like a, a Les Paul Supreme, except for the back has back plates and it's not carved. <laughs> but supreme in the fact that, yeah, unfortunately no figuring around here. They didn't go through those crazy lengths, but if they would have, man, that would have been fantastic. So somebody's definitely played this one. It's got some light nicks and dings. It's not a mint condition collectible. The crisp white binding on this thing, it really brings out that natural spearmint flavor of this guitar. One of my favorite things to see is the side profile view here. You can see just how much lighter the finish looks simply because of the maple wood versus the mahogany. And take a look at the thin binding in the cutaway. Very nice. But judging on the fact that it has the Nashville style bridge, I mean, this is just a custom shop custom. It's not trying to be a reissue of anything, which honestly I think is best for this particular example because of the rosewood fretboard flamed back five piece maple neck. I'm definitely not trying to be anything else. This is just a modern day beauty. So for that, I thought it was worth sharing with you guys. And seriously, if you're in love with this guitar, just buy it. That is a very fair price. 
for what's hiding on the back of this thing. If I were selling this, there would be no way that I'd be asking less than five and a half thousand. You can follow my affiliate link in the description if you'd like to check out this listing and claim it as your own. But it is coming from Canada, but they're saying that there should be no extra duties or taxes. And sometimes there's Canadian people that can actually cross the border and ship it, but I, I don't think they can actually do that right now. <laughs> the border's still closed. But being a USA made instrument returning to the USA, in theory, there shouldn't be any more additional fees. But all the time I run into this garbage where they try to charge you fees anyways. <laughs> and then you gotta go through that long dispute process. Unfortunately, that's kind of what happened to my modern flying V. It's tied up in paperwork, but it'll get here eventually. <laughs> it'll get here eventually. But that's a stunning guitar. <laughs> I guess since we got a couple of minutes yet to fill in this particular episode, got to give you guys the full content. Oh, nice. Whoa. How is there two? I was going to say we're going to do some guitar hunting, but I already found some interesting stuff. The Jonas Brothers Melody Maker. These things, they're so silly, but at the same time, I really want one. <laughs> I don't understand. How is there two listings one's at the very bottom then one's they're accepting offers i think this one's actually been for sale for a little bit but they are technically breaking reverbs of rules by having two listings for the exact same guitar that might be a mess up on their auto listings feature but anyways these things are so incredibly specced it's ridiculous you get dual p90 pickups a fun little wraparound tailpiece these have legitimate ebony fretboards I mean, sure, the, the Jonas Brothers, they might not be everybody's cup of tea, or you might not want their emblem on it, but I don't know. I, I always thought I would get one of these in Trade Tuesday. I tried so many times, but unfortunately, it just never worked out when I tried to buy one of these because I, I don't want to pay a thousand bucks for it. I mean, how much is this one? 800? Yeah, I don't want to pay 800 for it either. <laughs> Like 550 to 600, that's probably the most I want to do because I don't see anybody paying more than 800 bucks and that's if somebody really wants it or they happen to fall in love with the specs. I just think it's one of the funnier signature guitars out there. And even if you don't like the Jonas Brothers themselves, some of their solo work is actually pretty good. Looks like we got a studio light, a little bit more than I want to pay. Ooh, you don't see that finish too often. You used to see these things all the time. But they've kind of disappeared and now people are paying, you know, crazy money for these. These are not custom shop Les Paul Customs, that's for sure. But they're definitely interesting guitars. You know, I think it would be interesting to see Gibson reissue these, not in the USA lineup, but the custom shop lineup. I know they've got the Les Paul Access, but I don't think they have anything that's like truly as thin as the original custom lights. That's a custom shop reissue that needs to happen. And for anybody that's watching tonight, ooh, this is actually a pretty good deal. Ah, of course, local pickup only. That's why it's a good deal. Especially if they say it's in near mint condition. 800 bucks for a Silver Burst Studio. I wouldn't call that near mint, but you know, you, you've, you've got some buckle worming marks on there. But as far as those go, that's a really good price. And we'll end things off with this. Something about this J45 caught my attention earlier. An all gold acoustic. I, I don't think I've ever seen this before. Oh, it's just a gold top. That's kind of cool. I don't think I've ever seen just a gold top acoustic guitar before. It's mainly like Les Paul territory that I'm used to seeing that in, so having the natural back, it, oh, that's strange. No Mother of Pearl logo, but having the first fret marker. For some reason, trapezoid inlays on the first fret, they just, they don't look right to me unless it's the Pete Townsend one. But that's kind of a cool guitar. All right, thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.